So today's video is a review of the Magine One Lap Smart Spinning Bike. For starters, this bike retails on their site for $899. It can be connected to a variety of cycling apps, including their own app called One Lap. One Lap is an app in which you can race and compete using your own character, so it kind of has a video game feel to it. I was graciously gifted this bike, and these are my honest opinions on this product. Unfortunately, it's not available on Amazon, which most of the products that I review are on Amazon. But in a nutshell, this product feels quite well made and is more heavy duty in comparison to other spin bikes I've reviewed. The biggest barrier right off the bat would be the instructions are written in Chinese and also the power cable is not for the US market. However, you can easily buy a converter on Amazon to make it functional in your home. With that being said, today's video will be broken down into the following topic areas. This bike has 100 resistance levels. It's relatively lightweight with a net weight of 66 pounds. The flywheel itself weighs 15 pounds. The flywheel is fully enclosed and it can stop at the touch of a button to provide extra safe training. It has an electronic screen with a Bluetooth display. The data displays power, speed, and cadence. There's also a mobile phone holder and a tablet holder with adhesives. It includes pedals with toe cages. There are two wheels on the front end so you can easily move the bike. You can also adjust the height of the saddle and the handlebar. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the assembly of this bike. These are the instructions. They're all written in Chinese, unfortunately, but they do have pictures representing the various steps. So here we have the various bike components. As you can see, the bike already somewhat stands on its own, which will help us during the process. As designated by the red symbol over here, here's where you're going to plug in the electrical power cable. So I know the background for this video is a little bit different. I actually gifted this bike to my parents, so we're setting it up in their garage. I'm now gonna time it and see how long the assembly will take. So we're first gonna start by attaching the base parts. They include long screws, washers, and nuts. Here we're attaching the front as designated by the wheels. Next, we're gonna attach the cell phone or tablet holder. Here, we're just removing the four screws in order to attach the display cover. The display is controlled by the turn of the white knob. Now, we're going to attach the toe cages, which are actually quite simple. You just literally screw it on. They are designated left and right with stickers. So that was pretty much the whole setup. It took just under an hour. The screws they provided weren't of the best quality, so we had to swap a few out. It was a bit of a hurdle trying to follow the instructions as they were written in Chinese, but luckily the pictures did help us out. So this is the phone or tablet holder. There are these little suction cups on the back so your device can stick to it. Here is the dial that allows you to change the resistance. It's on a scale of 0 to 100. The handlebars can also be lifted up and down with this lever right here. And here we have the numerical representation of the height of the handlebars. So this is what the toe cages look like. As you can see, they don't require any clipping cleats, meaning that you can use regular shoes with this. The seat height can also be adjusted up and down with this lever right here. They do have a numerical scale right here so you can measure. And the seat can also be rotated forward or back with this little U-shaped portion. This is what the seat looks like. It's quite standard. If you find it uncomfortable, I would recommend attaching a seat cover to it. There are two wheels on the front end so you can easily tilt it to move it. Both the base and the bike frame itself are made of a sturdy welded steel. So the flywheel is located at the back of the bike and it is fully enclosed. And of course we have this emergency brake for stops. One thing that's confusing is when it cycles between the resistance numbers and the cadence numbers. I can't really tell which one it's referring to. As you can see, this is the speed that I'm pedaling. Here is a Bluetooth portion if you want to plug in your phone to charge. I'm going to open the Peloton app on my phone. And here we can select a cycling class. My name is Cody Bigsby. 
also need some resistance to challenge you throughout this ride. 80 to 100. You get your output in the middle. Just a moment of gratitude and give yourself an everybody that you love. Have the courage to share it with So I just finished a 15 minute workout right here. Then you can also rate the class. Here it says I burned 73 calories. So I just finished a 15 minute workout on the Magin bike using the Peloton app. One thing that first stood out to me is that the resistance and cadence numbers on this bike are much different than using the Peloton. I kind of have an idea based on my past experience with the Peloton of where to place it during the rides. But even if you're not exactly where they're recommending, it's still a good workout if you push yourself. So here I'm going to show how to connect the device. We just go under here and select spinning bike. And from here, you can see the one lap bike shows up. So there's two categories. There's workouts and there's free ride. I'm going to try free ride. And let's get started. So this is what it looks like when you use the app to ride. Unfortunately, it is a $4.99 per month charge. I'm technically not pedaling, but the avatar says I'm still pedaling. So the resistance levels are different if you use it with the app. It's designated by L. If you're not using the app, it just has a 0 to 100 resistance scale. So as mentioned before, this app does require a subscription. These are the three tiers if you're interested. 